We know there are two kinds of evil. The evil that exists as an external force. The other kind of evil lives inside us, like a sickness. In this chapter, we find a new villainous character that is an unlikely candidate to inherit the throne of the shape. And so that character starts to evolve from someone that we sympathize, empathize with, and then slowly starts to unravel and find himself drawn toward the allure of this darkness. Corey is a character who is dealing with his own trauma and has this connection with Myers. Oh, shit! Corey. Hi. Corey's just a sweetheart. It felt like I was playing a version of like David or our writer Paul when they were Corey's age. We went through so many ideas, but one thing that we kept coming back to was just the idea of babysitting. And Corey Cunningham became a part of the story. Michael Myers kills babysitters, not kids. It's interesting that they chose to open this last movie with a babysitter since the original conception of Halloween was a babysitter slasher movie set on Halloween night. Jeremy? The opening of this movie is every parent's worst nightmare. The accident happens and it kind of reshapes him completely. I just wanted it to be a fun night and then it all went bad. It takes a kid that we meet for the first 10 minutes of the film and turns him into something completely different, a lot like Michael did to Haddonfield. And so he's sort of the personification of, of that trauma. Hey. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. I'm just waiting for Allison. Allison sort of comes into the film and, and picks Corey up and forces him to face normalcy in a way. I'm going to go help Ronald and I'll fix the rattle. Uh, I don't care about the rattle. I came to see you. It's not a conventional love story. What they have is incredibly unique. They're just two very broken people. Everybody has an idea of who they are and what they go through, and they can connect on that. Oh my god, are you OK? I don't know what's happening to me. Corey's inner conflict through this whole movie is trying to hold on to the good left in him. I think it was really important to me and David that we asked the audience the ethical question in every scene in this movie. What would you do if you've been through this? And what would you do if you were seen this way? When I first read about the cave scene, it obviously not only represents where Michael's been dwelling, but it's also where Corey goes through his own transformation. the reawakening of Michael Myers was just like an electric energy. We had never seen someone encouraging Michael to do what he does. Get out! That energy of Corey was well beyond duality. This is beyond dark and light and right and wrong. And really is all about the feeling of those moments when Corey and I connected. And that recognition sort of pervades everything. They kind of echo each other. And in fact, Corey kind of learned by watching Michael. And so there's chapters where he is sloppy, and then he watches the master. And Corey is almost just absorbing it all. <laughs> In the scene where Rowan takes the mask, walked over to Rowan, I said, Rowan, jack me up, motherfucker. Jack me up as hard as you can. Slam me down as hard as you can, because we're going to make this work. You're just a man in a Halloween mask. I could see he was afraid, because he knew this was, like, really violent. And um, But then, boom, all of a sudden, he became Corey. And then as soon as we yell cut, then I hear David go, yay, we got it. You know, and it's those moments, man, that you live for. Oh, nice. Look at that. That's an incredible, incredible little sequence. All of Corey's kills have some sort of twisted sense of justice, where Myers is just like a psychopath. It's a different tale of the effects of evil on the psyche. Rowan is one of the kindest and most respectful people I've ever met and worked with. <laughs> And it's been really, really fun working with him. <laughs> Rowan's a freaking amazing actor. What a talent that kid is. He works so hard. He's so studied. He's so humble. You needed someone that could play an optimistic, ambitious, kind of nerdy intellectual in the opening. But by the end of it, you needed to be a real threat. Rowan, he had that. He had that optimism. Then you also saw something dark behind his eyes, something alluring and mysterious. 
And I saw a photo of him. I said, yeah, he looks like a guy that's been punched in the face a few times, but he's come out pretty handsome. He's like taking those hits like a champ. Yeah, man, watch this. Action. He's unbelievable. It takes a, a very specific human being to step into the role that he stepped into. Because <laughs> it's a lot. He has to step in and carry a huge chunk of the weight of the movie on his back. One of my biggest lessons I learned on this set was making a horror film, you have to keep it light sometimes because it gets really, really dark. That's going on. <laughs> <laughs>